In this video, I'm going to discuss divergence in Cartesian coordinates. Now, just as a little, uh, little side note, you can actually write divergence in different coordinate systems. You can write divergence in spherical coordinates and in cylindrical coordinates. And these coordinate systems are sometimes a lot more uh, convenient to work with because you might have spherical or cylindrical symmetry in your problem. But some of the easiest uh, systems and some of the most intuitive kind of coordinate systems are well described by the Cartesian coordinate system. And in three dimensions, that is x, y, and z. So you can actually see that all of these guys are mutually perpendicular to each other. So what you can do is, in the three dimensions, you can choose three unit vectors to be your basis vectors. And that is i hat, j hat, and k hat. These are the basis vectors of R3, or uh, the three-dimensional Euclidean space. So that is the 3D universe that we live in. So three spatial dimensions. Now keep in mind, uh, this stuff can also depend on time, but this time dependence is not explicitly shown here. So any vector field F can be broken up into uh, components, right? You can have Cartesian coordinates, and each of these guys are going to be the components. You're going to have the x, the y, and the z component, x, y, and z. So at every point in space, you're going to have a direction and a magnitude, which is uh, represented by a vector quantity. And each of those vectors has three coordinates, the x, y, and z coordinate. That's what these guys are. So this is some general vector field f. It can be, in certain situations, it can be the velocity of a fluid flow. It can be the electric field or the magnetic field. It can be any vector field that lives in three-dimensional space. Keep in mind, if you want to simplify this down to two-dimensional space, you can just remove the z component because the z component is zero in two-dimensional space. Right? You just have a flat plane, and there's no z sticking, sticking out in that plane. So i and j sit in the same plane, and k is perpendicular to that plane. And that is the z direction. So that brings us into the three-dimensional world. So we have i, j, and k. There are three basis vectors, so that's why the dimension uh, is three. So you may, you may recognize that if you are familiar with vector spaces, right? Because the dimension of the vector space, that's related to how many basis vectors you need to describe a vector uniquely in that vector space. So this over here is some general vector field. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define divergence. Now divergence is a very useful operation you can do, and it lets you know uh, physically how things come out of every point in space. So how things emanate, or uh, act as sources or sinks. So here's some notation for divergence. Sometimes people like to just write the letters div. That's short for divergence, div. Div of the vector field f. Sometimes people like to write the del operator, or sometimes as it's called nabla dot product with the vector field. So del dot, that just means divergence. Anytime you see del dot, that is divergence. Some people also like to write uh, an arrow or some kind of tilde or bar to say that this is a vector quantity because nabla or the del operator behaves just like a vector. But instead of having these scalar components as, uh, as, its, as its values and its components, it has partial derivatives. Right? This partial derivative with respect to x, uh, with respect to y, and res with respect to z, these guys form the components of the del operator. So the del operator is not like a normal vector where you just have three scalar values and that tells you an arrow pointing somewhere in space. This can't really be represented as an arrow pointing in space, but it does behave like a vector in the sense that it has three components. It's a three-dimensional vector. And so what we can do is if we want to operate uh, the divergence operator onto the vector field f, well, what we can do is we can just take the dot product of all of this business with all of this business. And how do you take the dot product? Well, to take the dot product, you take each of the components, you multiply them together, and then you take the sum of all of those products. So the first product is going to take fx, and it's going to differentiate it with respect to x. And it's going to keep all of the other uh, uh, values constant, right? Because it's a partial derivative. It's a partial derivative with respect to x. 
Then the second term is going to have Fy differentiated with respect to y, and the same will carry on for z. So x, y, and z are shown here. And again, if this was in two-dimensional space, you wouldn't have this last term. This last term would just disappear, and you'd have this guy plus this guy. So the partial derivative of the x component of the vector field with respect to x plus the same thing for y and the same thing for z, that is the divergence. So the divergence is actually a scalar quantity because all of these guys are scalar quantities. fx, fy, and fz, they are scalars, but they're the components of a vector. So f with an arrow on top, that's the vector, and these guys are the components. Do, do keep in mind that sometimes people like to use the subscripts of x, y, and z to denote partial derivatives with respect to x, y, and z uh, respectively. But in this notation over here that I've chosen to use, these guys refer to the components. So the subscript x, y, and z are the components in the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction respectively. So that's, that's how this works. So this is the definition of divergence. Divergence is really an essential uh, operation you can do on a vector field. It's really an essential concept in vector calculus because it links together how uh, vector fields flow out of regions. And it can actually tell you how vector fields will flow in or out. If divergence, this quantity of divergence, if this is zero, then there's no flow. There's no flow in or out of that point. But if this is positive, if all of these guys add up and they give a positive value, well then there's flow out. You've got emanating flow out of that region. And if this flow is negative, all of the, if these terms add up to give a negative number, then you know that something's coming in. There's something entering. There's more entering than there is leaving. So these guys individually could be positive or negative, but it's their sum that determines the sign of the divergence. And the magnitude of the divergence tells you by how much there is the, the part of the, the universe is acting as a source or as a sink. So the, I'll give you a little real world example. If you have some charge, then that's actually going to produce an electric field. And the divergence of the electric field is related to the charge density in a given region. So if that charge is positive, you're going to have emanation. It's going to be a source. Another real world example would be if you have a source for a fluid in two dimensions. Imagine you have a, a pool and you have a fountain. If that point in the if you take the point in the fountain, it's going to have a positive divergence because the fountain will will be a source for water in, these, in this two-dimensional world. Then if you have a sink that sucks the water down and, and is recycled and it gets launched back up into the fountain, well, then that sink will act as a sink, right? Because it will take fluid in. So fluid will, will flow towards the sink and away from the universe, which is our 2D world of this little fountain pool. And the fountain will act as a source for the water. So this actually lets you define what sources and sinks are. It's all about the sign of the divergence. So I hope that you see that the divergence is actually a very useful quantity. And keep in mind that there are other coordinate systems that are also equally important. And notably, uh, you have spherical and cylindrical coordinate systems. But this over here is the Cartesian coordinate system, and this is absolutely essential in vector calculus. So this is the divergence in Cartesian coordinates.